Almost exactly 50 years before Schaefer evaded the grasp of Chilean authorities, Nazis and Nazi supporters fled Europe by the thousands, finding solace in foreign lands. Unwilling to be held accountable for one of the largest acts of genocide ever, they ran like cowards. Paul Schaefer, at this point in his late 70s, when authorities finally came for him, he ran just the same. While the sexual abuse in the community may have ended when Schaefer fled, the other prominent leaders of the colony continued to drug and torture members to maintain the fear and control among its members in order to protect the secrets buried within its gates. In the mid-90s, amidst accusations of sexual assault and losing obvious government protections, Schaefer chose to take his chances on the run and face the consequences of his disgusting actions. I suppose, based on what the patterns of war criminals fleeing after World War II and the Holocaust, this shouldn't surprise anyone. Following Schaefer's escape, the remaining leadership continued to control the members of the commune still trying to subdue and have them smile for propaganda cameras or visitors who came to check on the situation. With the watchful eye of investigators upon them, the leaders had to make some modifications in order to remain intact. As children weren't allowed to speak with authorities without the presence of a guardian, the leadership removed children who grew up in the colony but were now of legal age. Knowing that they suffered physical abuse of hard labor and sexual assault, but being legal adults, they were a liability, with investigators able to question them. These young adults, who never attended schooling, at age of 18, had the education and understanding of an eight-year-old. They knew only German and were suddenly thrust into Chile without a dollar in their pocket, and many with physical disabilities because of the time spent working in the fields. And even though Schaefer's far right-wing allies were no longer in power, there were still questions of who could be trusted. How many people did Schaefer have in his back pocket and payroll? Who had helped Schaefer disappear? And who could really be trusted to bring him to justice? After nearly a decade on the run, Schaefer was found in 2005, hiding in a small farm near the border in Argentina. A journalist was the one who managed to track him down, and they were extremely careful not to alert the Chilean law enforcement or any government official out of fear that Schaefer's deep-rooted connections might alert Schaefer and compromise the arrest. Schaefer was extradited to Chile from Argentina, and in 2006, he was charged with 25 counts of sexual abuse of minors and sentenced to 20 years in prison, a life sentence for the Nazi in his mid-80s. Images of an elderly man being pushed around in a wheelchair for his sentencing, seeming unaware of where he was or why. Yet another facade by a man who fooled so many. He didn't just wander off into Argentina forgetting where he left his shoes. He was deliberately on the run. Paul Schaefer Schneider died in prison in 2010 at the age of 88, and many secrets of Colonia Dignidad died with him. Paul Schaefer was a man who destroyed so many lives, leaving the people of Colonia Dignidad without education and physically and mentally traumatized. With Schaefer dead and authorities crawling all over Colonia Dignidad, leadership was unable to force members to stay any longer. But for some residents of the colony, it's not exactly welcoming outside either. There's a stigma with terrible jokes, awful questions. It was easier for some to stay and surround themselves with what and who they knew. And without education, what else could they do? Those who have stayed in Colonia Dignidad have helped transform the colony into something else entirely. What was once a center for torture into a tourist attraction. Intended to give a 
complete German experience, the newly named Via Baviera has a restaurant, hotel, and even event space, all where people were abused and tortured. Tourists can sip German beer, eat their Wiener Schnitzel and sausage, some none the wiser of the terrible things that happened here. Those who still run the camp do not talk about what happened here. And yet, we still don't have all of the facts of what happened in Colonia Dignidad. Today, there are 28,000 files kept under lock and key in Santiago on what happened in Colonia Dignidad that makes us wonder, what is the Chilean state still hiding today? In some ways, Chile is determined to erase its past, just like the residents of Dignidad. There are so many questions that remain unanswered. Was there a degree of assistance in the creation of bunkers, tunnels, hospital, production of armaments from the German intelligence? Was Colonia Dignidad created at the onset like a fortress, or was it solely with the help and financial backing of the Chilean government? How much did the support and allegiance to the military dictatorship under President Pinochet have to do with the leadership's Nazi past? And will the victims of Colonia Dignidad, both members of the colony and, quote, enemies of the state under Pinochet, ever get justice? Amnesty International published a report on torture in Colonia Dignidad in 1977. There was reason to investigate what was happening in Colonia then. International human rights agencies were aware that people were being tortured using techniques that hearkened back to the times of the Holocaust, used by the angel of death, Joseph Mengele himself, who frequented Colonia Dignidad. And yet, Schaefer wasn't put into prison until 2005. We will likely never know all of the devastation that happened there, but it's estimated that at least 100 people were murdered as the main place people were taken to by Dina secret police for the sole purpose of torture and death. So far, 40 corpses have been excavated, one mass grave found with a likelihood of more, and evidence of ashes tossed in the local river. Under Pinochet's rule, it's estimated that approximately 3,000 people were killed, with more than 1,000 still considered missing, such as the missing body of American citizen Boris Weisweiler. In 1987, he was hiking in the area when he disappeared, and while his body was never found, there is evidence to support that he was abducted and taken to Dignidad, where he was later killed. In February 2013, Five of Schaefer's closest accomplices, who were leaders of Dignidad, were sentenced to prison for up to 11 years. In 2015, a former Dina intelligence officer, Fernando Gomez Segovia, Germans Kurt Schnellenkamp, and Gerard Muki Kosicke were given five years prison time for their role in the April to June 1975 kidnappings, when over 50 people were kidnapped during that three month period and brought to Dignidad. All three of them were already in prison for human rights abuses under Pinochet and for sex crimes committed in Colonia Dignidad. Let's also not forget Schnellenkamp's identification as one of Hitler's own personal bodyguards. Harma Topp, Dignidad's physician, and Schaefer's right-hand man, Richard Doring, who were part of Colonia's leadership, took a leaf out of Schaefer's book and fled Chile to avoid imprisonment, hiding in plain sight in Germany. The German constitution forbids a national from being extradited, so they are able to live as free men and living close to where many of their victims live. Many of the Germans who migrated to Colonia Dignidad retained their German citizenship, and many left Colonia after Schaefer's conviction to return to Germany. The victims and perpetrators alike relocated to the same area to find solace in the teachings again in William Branham, at a church led by Ewald Frank near Dusseldorf. George Loeb, 
A son of a settler who went to Colonia Dignidad left the colony not long after Schaefer died in prison. In an interview in 2009, saying, quote, I definitely left Via Baviera last February because nothing has really changed. Those who make up the board are from the sect of Pastor Ewald Frank, and in his religion, women are second-class people. Sex is a sin and everything. Frank was not allowed to enter Chile in 2005, but in 2003, he baptized more than 170 settlers of all ages in the Perlaquin River. That's when I realized that nothing had changed. Whether the victims are able to forgive and forget, though, isn't for me to say. According to the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights, quote, in early 2019, investigations into Hop and Doring were closed. This setback shook survivors and witnesses' trust in the German justice system. Many had been willing to give evidence in the proceedings, but were simply ignored. ECCHR partner lawyer Petra Schlagenhoff's appeal to this decision was rejected in December 2020. ECCHR filed a disciplinary complaint. Those affected also submitted a request for legal examination. But that's not the only battle that lay ahead for the former residents of Dignidad. Manfred Hempel, born in the colony in 1967, escaped at the age of 20 when cult leaders and the commune were under close scrutiny. To avoid the adult children from being questioned by authorities, Manfred was able to leave. He was 20 years old but had the education of an 8-year-old, spoke only German, and suffered firsthand the horrors of Paul Schaefer. Hempel worked incredibly hard to change his life and the lives of others at Dignidad. Today, he is a lawyer for the Supreme Court in Santiago and is bringing the victims of Dignidad together for a civil lawsuit to both German and Chilean governments. With his help, over 120 former Colonia residents have filed a lawsuit against the governments of Chile and Germany to serve two objectives, monetary compensation, so that the members can live the rest of their lives with dignity, and the second is for the moral acknowledgement that the governments were aware of the atrocities and need to own up to their actions or lack thereof. Hempel said the suit made clear, quote, that nearly 300 German citizens were enslaved for decades and abused, and that the Chilean and German states connived with this and were collaborators with the former Chilean dictator Gastro Pinochet's regime in this violence. In 2019, the German case settled, with Germany paying 10,000 euros in compensation to each of the members of the colony. As of right now, Chile has not agreed to settle out of court, and so it may move forward to trial. The suit against Chile is far greater than the one against Germany, filing for $1 million per person of the colony to help compensate for the horrors that they experienced and the difficulty they will have to even be able to begin to move on. They're lacking education, suffering both physical and emotional pain. Some justice, since many of their tormentors are free men, might help them move on once and for all. Today, the actual physical land of tens of thousands of acres in Chile are owned by the company Inmobiliaria Serraro Florida Limitada, a legal agreement between the State Defense Council and the companies that comprise of Colonia Dignidad guarantees the properties are valued at $6 million and the payment of the compensation to victims. However, that's a far cry from the $271 million lawsuit filed against the Chilean government for negligence and knowledge of the structured torture and violation of human rights. Via Baviera manages to survive today based on income the farm is able to produce. The poultry farm produces 30,000 eggs a day, as well as tourism. A small museum there makes no mention of the horror under Paul Schaefer, and particularly his time of alliance with President Pinochet. Margarita Romero, president of the Association of Memory and Human Rights, said, quote, 
It is not possible that a place where serious violations of human rights such as torture, murders, and disappearances should function as a tourist destination. Imagine a hotel built in a concentration camp in Europe. It would never be permitted. The Association for Memory and Human Rights and Dignity Colony recently sought and won the right to make Colonia Dignidad a national monument. This ensures that Chile will protect certain areas within the colony where these crimes were committed and cannot be altered or destroyed. These sites include the potato storeroom, the hospital, Paul Schaefer's house, the main entrance, and the communication headquarters. Now, the rebranded Via Baviera is run by Anna Schnellenkamp, daughter of one of Paul Schaefer's right-hand men, Kurt Schnellenkamp. Remember that last name? Kurt died in 2017 after serving a five-year sentence for his part in helping Schaefer abuse children. Ironically, Anna's brother Klaus wrote a book about his escape from the colony called Born in the Shadow of Fear, I Survived Colonia Dignidad. Only in 2019 was the first plaque put up to memorialize the victims of Colonia Dignidad. The plaque hangs on the exterior wall of the potato cellar that was known for its place of torture. The plaque was put up by none other than Manfred Hempel, the colony-born turned attorney, fighting for the victims, and Anna Schnellenkamp watching stoically in the crowd. When Anna Schnellenkamp was asked why it took so long for a memorial to be placed in Via Baviera, she said it was a good question, and then said that she questioned those who still lived there, why it was kept a secret, and why nothing was done to tell the truth about what happened there, and why nothing was done to have a proper memorial. Well, Anna, that's exactly why you were asked. You're the director. It's about time for the leaders of the community, no matter what the name is, no matter what decade it is, to start being accountable for their actions. Tourist attraction or not, perhaps things still haven't changed within the barbed wire fence. Instead of a front that's a farm, it's a restaurant. Former colony leader Hugo Barr, who escaped the camp in 1984, said in an interview published in Time magazine, quote, I fear for the lives of the Dignidad people if it comes to conflict there. I am certain that shootings cannot be avoided, and I say that out of deep conviction. The children of the colony of Dignity were the personal pets of Paul Schaefer, kept in the torture chambers and given electroshock therapy to warp their memories from knowing the depths of torture they underwent. The machine guns, grenades, rocket launchers, chemical weapons like sarin gas being manufactured there? It's incredible to say that as horrible as it was, it could have maybe been even worse. There are guided tours of the place where Schaefer abused and raped dozens and dozens of boys. Beers poured above the floorboards where hundreds of enemies of Pinochet and the members of the colony to say subservient were tortured in the bunkers. Only one small plaque on a potato cellar to memorialize those tortured, murdered, and buried here in the Dignity Colony. <laughs> 